Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Today let me show you how to make square video on your Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 600 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you could read more about the Patreon campaign. Join us and get exclusive content and course discounts. So typically video is wide. Wide as in your television set, as in a movie screen, as in YouTube video. But sometimes you want it to be square. Facebook posts and Instagram posts are two places where square video works really well. So if you're making video for marketing purposes or you just want it to look really good on those platforms you may want to produce video that's completely square. Well iMovie won't do this for you. iMovie sticks to the 16 by 9 ratio and you can't produce square videos. But you can do it if you use Keynote. So I'm using the latest version of Keynote, version 10. And let's create a basic black template document here. I'm going to select the text and delete it so we just have a blank slide to work with. And I'm going to go to Document and here I can change the slide size from widescreen to custom. So with custom I'm going to choose something that's square, the same width as height. So I'll keep the height as 1080 but I'll change the width to match that. And now you can see the slide is square. Let's zoom out a bit so you can see the entire square slide. Now let's put some video on it. I'm going to drag and drop some regular video here because anything that you've shot is probably going to be 16 by 9 video. It's not going to be square. So once it's import I've got it where the width is going to match the width of the slide and the height's not going to. So one thing you can do here and it may not be the best option for you is to expand the height so it matches the height here and it's going to cut off the sides. And with Keynote you can actually see what's on the left and right a little bit. But only the middle square is actually going to be what's going to be exported. So you can position this. If all the action is taking place on the one side you can position it over there. If it's taking place on this side you can position it there. You don't have to get it exactly in the center. I'm going to put it exactly in the center which probably in most cases is what you want. Now that I've got this if I were to play this slideshow I would just see the middle square of the video which is also what I'll get if I export. So if I go to File, Export to, Movie and then I keep it at self playing. I change the Go to Next slide to 0 so it doesn't add any extra time at the end of the video. And I can set the resolution to full resolution here. Then if I were to export this and save it out I'll get a video that's actually completely square. The dimensions of the video itself are square not just the content. So here's the resulting video. If I double click on that it opens up a QuickTime Player and you can see it is square and it plays like a regular video and any sound in the video will be preserved. You'll actually hear the same audio as the original. Now we can actually do better than this. Chances are if you're uploading to Facebook or Instagram maybe you're trying to do this to promote something or you want to somehow add something extra to the video to make it even more attractive. And maybe you don't want to chop off the edges. So let's shrink this down so it fits perfectly here in the middle. And we could use this extra space for various things. So let's go and add some text. And I could add a piece of text here. And let's bring this up here to the top and we could play with the text a little bit. Let's make it a nice looking font. Let's center it. Let's make it larger. We could apply color to it if we want. Let's create an attribution. And let's line all this up. Let's make it look good up here. Maybe at the bottom we'll put a URL for trying to promote something. And you could do all sorts of different things with graphics. So you can bring in, say, a logo as well. I'll use a shape instead. And we'll put that down here. We can make that a color. You can even have graphics go on top of the video. So let's pick another shape. I'll go down to Ornaments here and pick this little ornament. And I can enlarge that a bit, have it go half over the video itself. And let's color it in here. I'm actually going to use the color picker and use the eyedrop tool to grab a green from the image itself like that. So it's all sorts of things that you could do to use that extra space at the top and bottom of the video. And of course this doesn't have to be video in the middle here. It could be all the way at the top with extras at the bottom. It could be at the bottom with extras at the top. It could be a little bit off center to accommodate whatever you have in mind. And now when you export this video you'll get the video playing and also all of those other elements. So remember to set this to 0 seconds 
and change our resolution to what we want and export this one. So here's the final video. Let's look at that in QuickTime Player. And when we play it we'll see the video actually playing there with the element there over it and the text and logo and everything like that. Very good looking piece of media to be able to post online. So the sky's the limit for what you want to do here with the video. The idea here is if you want to actually edit a video together from various clips do all that in iMovie and keep in mind that what you're going to preserve is either the center square of it or if you're going to bring it in and have text and things at the top and bottom that it's going to shrink a little bit in size. And then after you do all your video work in iMovie export it out and use this as the final step in Keynote to add things above and below. And you don't have to just do this with square video. You can do it with vertical video as well. You can make it slightly more vertical. That may work on some platforms. Uh, you can have it slightly wider but maybe not 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. You can really create any size video that you want this way. I publish new tutorials every weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. Then hit the little bell icon to get notifications for each new tutorial.